of Bezrat Hashem. Okay, so we 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 continue. We're going to continue discussing a little bit more on uh, what we left off uh, last year, which where we discussed essentially three things, three subjects. Subject number one: Why do we start with a mem? Right, which is the continuation of the work of David Amelech. The sod, the secret of the mem, right? That is basically representing the heart, and that has the mem has the yud, right? Which brings down the chokhmah into the mem, which has the opening to allow the wisdom to come down, right? And that represents the heart. And Shomar Melech decided to, to pick up where his father left off, which is starting with the mem of Mishle and the taf at the end of Eshet Chai that we all know. That's the second subject uh, that we addressed. And the third that we spoke about was the Mem Rabati, the big Mem, right? Why it was a big Mem. Uh, we brought the, 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 one of the reasons that we, the reason we brought in the last shiur was that he prayed, he, he, he fasted for 40 days, which is the gematria, the numerology of the letter Mem, to tell us that for 40 days he fasted in order to be zocher, to be blessed with the wisdom of Moshe Rabbeinu, the chokhmah of Moshe Rabbeinu. I just have a question on that. Don't we learn that the purpose of us being in this world is also for oneg, a pleasure? So why would we, why but that is depends. There's a moment, no, but it's not inflicting. I think there's moments where you need to detach yourself from the physicality in order to be a vessel to receive something that's entirely spiritual. Which I guess in essence is actually more oneg than you could ever imagine. That, that, that for sure, that for sure. But again, there is applying the wisdom, which is the, the, the equilibrium between physicality and spirituality. This is a life. And then there is being a vessel to receive. Shlomo Amelech became a vessel to receive wisdom and Torah, just like Moshe Rabbeinu was a vessel to receive Torah. <clears throat> now, another reason why there is uh, Shlomo, uh, Shlomo Amelech wrote Mishle with a big man, we're going to bring another two reasons. One reason, so that's the second reason in, uh, in, uh, in the Mem Rabati, the Gaon brings in the Likutim is because he was Zoche, Akadosh Baruch Hu gave him three things. He gave him Chokhmah, Shlema, a complete Chokhmah, a complete Bina, a complete Tevuna, and Rohavlev, a very large heart that is the, considered as the Dat. So because Hashem gave him Chokhmah, Bina, and Da'at, Chokhmah, Tevuna, and Da'at, in such a high level, and the word, maybe the word complete is inaccurate, because there's no, there's no complete, but the highest level of Chokhmah, the highest level of Bina, and the highest level of Da'at, right? So he expressed, he expressed that through what? Through the Mem Rabati, through the Mem Rabati, saying that he was that he was basically Shalem, Shalem. He felt he felt complete. Now, we will see that right away in in Pasuk Bet, right? He uh, Shlomo Amelech will address those three things: Ladat Chokma. Number one, Musa, right? Which is the Da'at. Le'avinim Rebina is the Bina. So we see that we find Chochma, Bina, and Da'at, right? So the, 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 the purpose of the Mem Rabati says, uh, says uh, brings the Likutagra of the big Mem is to tell us that when he writes, he doesn't write with half knowledge, half Chochma, or, or flaw in Bina, sometimes, because sometimes people are very strong in Chokhmah, but they don't have Bina. Sometimes they don't have a lot of Chokhmah, but they have great Bina. Sometimes they don't have great Chokhmah and Bina, but they have good 
analysis to bring the data together, to bring everything together. Shlomo Amir tells us, by the way, you should know that when I write, I write with the highest power, possible power of Chokhmah Binan Da'at. And that's because the mem is complete as a letter. I'm sorry. And that's because the mem is complete as a letter. That's how it relates. So go, going back, going back to the to the to the to the sort of the mem, to the sort of the mem that we said last year, which is the yud, which has the kot, which can, which is the keter that absorbs from the keter the yud, which is the chokhmah, and brings it down. Okay, as the bina, we, and is open, open to allow. And we're going to understand that the op, the opening. Is the connection to what is the connect the connection to this world, right? The yud represent the, the olam haba, which is which is the, the the spiritual world, and the opening of the mem open is is what allows the chokhmah, which is spiritual, to flow down into humanity. We're going to get back to 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 this uh, shortly. In the kitve yad, in the kitve yad. There's two, two places Shlomo Amir, uh, the, the Gaon addresses those that Chokhmah Bina and Da'at of Shlomo Amir. One of them, <clears throat> he says the following. He says, Shira Shirim, Shlomo Amir wrote it through Chokhmah. That's where you see the greatness of the Chokhmah. Kohelet is where you see the Bina. And Mishle is the Da'at, which is the, that's the Zohar that says that, which is the, 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 the merging between the Chokhmah and the Bina. So when it's, it's, if you want, it's the combination of Shira Shirim and Kohelet. If you have Shira Shirim and Kohelet and you want to see all this Chokhmah and how it comes down and how it's expressed and explained, it's through Mishle. Physically right, uh, Mishle blessed. I'm sorry, we spoke about this. We spoke about the, the, the Seder at Barim already a few times. In Barak Ashachar in Kohelet, he addresses a little bit different. He says what? Says the Gaon. He says, Shir Asherim is the love, representing the love. Now, it's no longer a, 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 an approach of structural intellect, which is Chokhmah Binan Da'at, which is more Kabbalistic. But from a, uh, here, Shlomo, uh, uh, the Gaon Mivilna addresses in Kohelet the, the work of Shlomo from a more emotional and human perspective. So he says, Shira Shirim represents the love. Kohelet represents the wisdom, right? A lot of wisdom we learned in Kohelet. And Mishle, the Musa, the ethics. What's interesting, which is interesting, is that uh, Rabbi Menachem Mendel, which was the student of the Gaon Mivilna, he was he lived with the Gaon Mivilna for he says shnatayim pachotzlish. So he's a two years minus a third, which is a year, a year and eight months. A year and eight months. He lived with the Gaon day and night. Didn't leave him one second. And he's the one who wrote the commentaries of the Gaon, Mivilna, on Mishle and others. So every word that we have in Mishle was written by the Ramam. We call him the Ramam, Rabbi Menachem Mendel. And Rabbi Menachem Mendel says that the Gaon Mivilna, when he learned Mishle, he broke down Mishle into three books. Why? And which leads us to the third Pirush of the big men. There's three times the word Mishle in the Sefer Mishle. Shlomo Amalek will use this term three times. The first Pasuk. The second time in Perek Yud, he says Mishle Shelomo. And the third time in Perek Kavhe, Good? So from the first Perek until Perek Yud, right? No, sorry, sorry. 
the first word of the first perek is Mishle. In the first word of, per, of Perikud, if we open Perikud, okay. Mishle Shalomo ben Chacham Yisamachav. And if you open Perikavhe, Perikavhe, Ve'ele, in it. Gam Ele Mishle Shalomo. No, no, it's not written. We're going to see, oh. So the, 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 the Chachamim tell us that when Shlomo HaMelech wrote Mishle or wrote Shir Hashim, right? Or wrote Kohelet, he wrote it with tremendous Chokhmah, Bina, and that. He wrote a thousand and five songs and out of them Shir Hashirim, we discussed it, right? Which is the song of all songs. He wrote 3,000 mashalim, 3,000 proverbs. Out of the 3,000 proverbs, he, he kept three that are the most precious to him, which are the three times the word mishle is mentioned in the book. The Ramam tells us that the Gaon broke these three portions into three categories that Shlomo HaMelech wanted to address. Category number one, the first from Mishle to Mishle, is what? Chokhmah. Chokhmah. We're going to see this later. The second portion of Mishle, so it's like a second book of Mishle, right, from Perikyu to Kaveh. He says, no, that's already the Bina. Where's the dot? It's the third portion from Cafe until the end, which is the Musa. So the beginning was Chokhmah? The first one is the Chokhmah. The second is Musa. And the third one is Torah. The third one is is, is the Bina. So it's it's Dat that and Bina. That's Why right. In that order. Huh? I'm sorry? Why is it in that order? Are you gonna understand? Because the Bina in that in that sense represents the Torah. We're going to get to we're going to get to it. We're going to get to that. The gown addresses it very clearly. So, if we resume, we we just have a, another two re, good reasons why Shlomo Melech wrote the mem of Mishle with a big mem, mm -hmm. or because he wants to tell us that when he wrote it, he wrote it with complete chokmah bina and that, or because he wants to tell you that these are the most precious, the most valuable, the most important Meshalim out of all the 3,000 Meshalim that he wrote. Good? No. In last year, last year, we addressed the fact that Shlomo HaMelech picked up where his father left off. The pasuk says in David in 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 uh, in Tehillim, "Lecha Yeshulam Neder." Says the Zohar. What does it mean, "Lecha Yeshulam Neder"? The Zohar says, "Hashem tells David Amelech, your name will be complete completed during your life. You, Hashem, your name, Hashem, will be completed during your life." Who is that? It's Shlomo Amelech that came and wrote Shir Hashirim and built Bet Hamikdash, etc. Now, there is something extremely interesting. So we said, we said that he started from the Mem because his father finished Tehillim with the Lamed. Now, 
David Amelech, we said, represents the Rosh. Shlomo Amelech represents the heart. Very good. The Rosh, the Chokhmah, is the Yud. The heart, which represents the Olamaze. No, one second. Is, yes, is the member in the name of Akadosh Baruch Hu, You have spiritual world and you have the physical world. You have the Chokhmah, which is the, the head, which is spirituality. And then you have the physical, which is the heart. Yetzer Lev Adam Ram in right? Which is the He. So the Yud represents David and the He represents Shalomo. Very good. Very good. Now, which means another correlation, and then we'll explain that from the Aleph until the Lamed, it's the Rosh, it's David Amelech. The Mem represents what? The re re represents the heart, which is essentially in the name of Hashem, the He of Yudke. Look at the first two words of Mishle. Katuv Mishle Shelomo. If you take out the Yud and the He, what does it say? It says the Mashal Hashalem. Mashal Shalem. The Mashal, the Meshalim of the Yud, which is David Amelech, are only Shalem with the He, with my He. I am the one that's completing the Yud of my father. Mishle Shelomo. I'm bringing the youth of my father, bringing it down to the hay. That's why in the beginning it says Mashal, which is the Meshalim, are only Shalem with me, Shelomo. That's Mishle Shelomo. Is there an interconnectedness between uh, the actual understanding of Tehilim and. and uh... Very different. Very different. Very, di very different. Is it's very different structure, very different messages. Right, very but different. if you know that they're completed by each other, right? But I, the, the, the whole Torah complete each other. But yes, right, but what is the interconnectedness between the two, right? Because if you're thinking about it, yes, it represents it. But are the actual books connected in any way? Can you learn something from Tehillim through Michelet? Can you learn something? In Tehillim. Because it's saying that Mishle, right, which represents Shilomo, completed David. Put the question aside. Yeah. Mehila. Put the question. Uh, for a minute. Let, let me just finish the, 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 sorry. the, the thought and we, we're going to get back. That's the technical question you ask. How to, how, to, how to see the connection between the two. Right now, right now, what do we find? What do we find? We find that Shlomo Amelech chose the Mem. The Mem to continue the work of his father. And the man represents the heart. His father was the brain. He was the chokhmah, right? He was the, the, the yud, the yud. So he says, mashal yud, the meshalim of the yud. I take the yud and all its meshalim. I take the chokhmah of my father and all his proverbs, all his meshalim. And I make them shalem with, he, with the he, which is the olamazeh, which is the heart. Through me, shalom. That's the secret of the, what the Zohar means when he says that, at, at, that in the times of Shalomo Melech, the name of Hashem will be completed because he took the Yud that his father mastered and, 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 and connected it to the head that he mastered, which is the Lev, which is the name of Shalomo. Now, now. So Davani Flamot. The Malchut, the kingdom of the, of 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 Bet Yehuda of Yehuda, is compared to by the Chachamim, the Zohar in many different places, to the Levana. That's what we say during Berkat Levana. David Melech Israel Chayv Kayam. David Melech Israel Chayv Kayam. We say it also at night. Gamken, but Davka we had the Berkat Levana. Why? Because just like the Malchut of the the kingdom of 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 Yehuda faded, 
and disappeared, like they almost disappeared, like, like it won't, it, it's going to come back. It's going to come back. Wow. Now pay attention. Pay attention. David Ameler. David Ameler is the 14th generation from Yehuda. Good? 14. It's just very interesting that the gematria of David is 14. Oh my God. Which makes Shelomo Amelech the 15th. Mishle Shelomo Yud Vehe. Here you have your, you can have your 15th. Wow. But wait, we're not there. That's, that's fine. When you took the, the, when you look at the cycle of the moon, 30 days? It's, hour. yeah, the 29 and, and et cetera. When is the moon at its fullest? Uh, On the 15th, right? It's a full moon. Huh? It's a full moon. The full moon, meaning it, go, it enters the full cycle on the 14th. I mean, on the 14th, it's not complete. It gets completed on the 15th and starts going down on the 15th also. Right. And, then it... and then it goes down again, fades again, to start again. That means that David, at the time of David Amela, which is the 14th generation that represents the 14th day of the moon, it's only going up. Going up, strengthening, strengthening, going up, 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 up. David just went and became stronger and stronger. He never faded. Comes the Shlemut. He's the 15th. But what happens on the 15th? It goes down. Hashem brings him his Yetzerara. He that, brings the fall down exactly of Shlomo Melech at half of his life. 52. 52. That's when he started going down. So he was the most complete version but of the Malchut. The beginning of the end. But also the beginning of the end. This is why Shlomo Melech at the end goes down. So what do we find in David Amelech, in Shlomo Amelech? We find completion and the beginning of the fall down. This is Shlomo. Shlomo is Shalem, but he's also the beginning of the crackdown according to the to the to the Levana. Because also in essence, there's nothing that's really Shalem except oh, Hashem. Actually, yeah, actually, yeah. But he was, he was, he, he tasted, he tasted Shalem. Now, now what's very interesting, he was given Chokhmah, he was given Bina, and he was given Da'at, right? We said, and this is one of the reasons why we have the big men. Another reason why we have the big men. The Gaon, the Gaon says the following. He says the first Mishle, a Mishle Arishon, is the Chokhmah. And what does it mean, Chokhmah? Lehavin pituye yetzerara, to understand the, 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 the desires, the, 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 the wickedness, the trick, the, the trickiness of the Yetzerara. The Echlistom Devara, and how to fight it. The second Mishle, is against that. Now listen. That's why from the, first, the third, the, 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 the beginning of the fourth perek, of the tenth perek, sorry, of the, okay, of the tenth perek, Mishle Shelomo, right? On until perek cafe, you will have always, every pasuk is something and it's contrary. Sorry, it's, it's contrary. Sorry, it's always, to flip side. He said, because this is what that, what is, what is the that? In order, in order to have that, you have to be able to understand the Yetzirah and how to overcome it. You have to be able, Let's see the first part again? you have to understand the Yetzirah and how to overcome it. If you want to be uh, that that, 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 that means that if Shelomo Amelech has that, that means that he is in one hand 
complete and incomplete. Complete cannot bear or relate to incomplete. Perfection cannot coexist with imperfection. Imperfection cannot coexist with perfection. Nahon? By definition. By definition. Nahon? Yes. Very good. Now, for Shlomo Amelech to have Da'at, he has to, he has to carry both. Yetzirah and Yetzirah Tov. Does that mean he experienced Yetzirah? Oh, before he experienced, we know that he did. But died that he did. Hashem brought him a that, very big that's Yetzirah. That's contradiction. So one second, one second. Exactly, one second. That means that Shlomo Melech, in order to be able to give you what he gave you, he, he gave us in, in a complete way, he had to be Shalem and incomplete. He had to have the portion, half of the portion of his life or a portion of him, which was of the 15th day that complete, that means that represents completion and be exposed also to the failure, to the fall down, to the fall down. Bravo. Which is, which me, which, which explains us. He wrote, now. he wrote, he wrote Mishle at the end of his life or in the middle? It's a very good question. It's a very good question. At the end, at the end, at the end. Now, if you look at the mem, right? The mem represents the heart, represents the he, right? right. So Shlomo Melech will start with the you that's on top of the, of the mem, which connects him to his father. But Afterwards, since he's con also connected, he represents the hair of the UK, which represents the heart. Where does the failure come? It doesn't never comes in the youth, never comes in the in, in the in the chokhmah. The weakness comes from the heart. The failure comes from the heart. This is why Shlomo Amelia starts by identifying himself with the mem of Mishli in his wisdom, in his chokhmah. It's, it's, it, 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 it gives such clarity. And also, also, the Zohar Kadosh says that two individuals were blessed with an extra letter of Hashem. Were given, a, no, 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 not that. You have Yehoshua, which was given to Yud. And you have Shalomo that was given the He. Was he ever Shalem and not Shalomo? Huh? No, 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 no. He was given, no, he was the, the, a letter from Akadosh Baruch. Oh, In either, the word Shalomo. A yud, a yud or a he. I'm sorry? Either a Yud or Yes. A Shlomo was given the He. Yoshua was given the Yud. Right? Yeshua, that's the student of Moshe Rabbeinu, which represents the son, is at the beginning. So where is the letter of HaKadosh Baruch Hu given in the beginning of his word? Yehoshua. But Shelomo, that represents the Levana, that represents the moon, which is the weakness, where does he get it? At the end. That's why it's Shalem He, and not Yesh. So they give rise in the beginning. I'm sorry? It's the weakness is in the end. That's right. And the, and the Koach, Koach is, that's that's right. in the, the sun is in the beginning. Is, is this, um, I could be just not. Tell me. Yitzchak has a Yud in the beginning, but doesn't he represent Gibura? Does he does. Have anything to do with it? He does. No. I said he does represent no, Gibura. That, but that's the beginning. Right. So I'm saying that would apply in the nah, same way. Uh, if, no? if no. we haven't seen written that Hashem gave its hag his youth. Here we're talking about something very specific. Akadosh right. Baruch Hu using, taking his name, which is the yud and the he, that he used to create to the creation, and says the Zohar, he took the yud and gave it to Yehoshua, okay. and took his he and gave it to Shelomo. I missed that reading in the Zohar. No. So the, the so the, 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 like there's the sun and there's the Levana, and there is uh, the moon. 
the son is Yehoshua with his youth, and the, and and the he is the the, the Levana, the, the moon that, that is in Shelomo. That's the Zohar Kadosh. I'm not going to go into uh, more of the Sodot, but I would love to. Aval. So here, so what, what, what is our Hidush? Our Hidush is that everything revolves around what? Around the Yud and the He. Around the Yud that represents David, around the He that represents Shelomo, around the Chokhma and the Lev, Koach, right? The Vura and the Lev. It's all written in Mishle Shelomo. The Mashal and Shalem are the same letters. Exactly the same letters. So the Mashal that are connected to the Yud, that are needed for the Yud, become Shalem with the He. And that's Mishle Shelomo. That's Mishle Shelomo. Everything about David Melech and Shlomo Melech and their journey and what they represent and the two generations that they represent and the, the, the Memar Arabati and what it represents, all of it and everything that Shlomo Melech wants to teach us and the message he wants to send us are in the codes of the word Mishle Shlomo. We didn't start then David yet. We didn't start Mishle Shlomo. Okay. That was just the introduction. That was just, yes. I think, I think, Ezrat Hashem, Ubesiata Dishmaya. We're going to try to, I'm going to try to conclude the introduction with this so that we can actually start, okay? The, the Hidushim, Ezrat Hashem, of the first Pasuk. Of the first Pasuk. Any questions? Uh, another thing very important, Mechila, just to put things in perspective, we said that, that according to the Gaon, Shlomo HaMelech basically took three books and put them together, right? From the, from the first uh, Perek until the 10th Perek, and 10 to 25, 25, four, right? What's also very important to, to know is that the first six Pesukim are the purpose of the book. The whole purpose. The whole purpose of the book. The purpose of the book, we're going to see. Mishle Shemelomo ben David, Melech Israel, right? The Proverbs of Shlomo ben David, King of Israel. Ladat, for what? Ladat Chokma u Musar, Yavim in Rebina, Lakahat Musar Haskel, Sedek u Mishpat, um Sharim, Latet Liftaim Orma, Vehule Vehule, right? All the way. Pasubab, Chacham, Veyosef Lekach, Benavon, Tahbulot, Ikne, Yavin. And now we start. So from base, essentially from Pasuk Zain, the book of Mishle really starts with the Mishali. The first six Pesukim summarize everything that Shlomo Melech wants to teach us in Mishle. So, Blineder, Blineder, Fakamush Bahu helps us, gives us hope. Koach, Blineder, we're going to start the first Pasuk of Mishle next year. Next year. Amen. 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 Amen.